They wanted a better life for their only son. Quincy and Charles weathered childhood together in Compton. They always had each other's back. Over the course of their teen years, the boys got into the normal transgressions against society. Smoking in the school bathroom, petty theft, breaking curfew, sneaking into movies and joyriding. It was that one incident of joyriding that changed Quincy and Charles's life forever. One summer night, Charles was, Charles was hell-bent on joyriding. He wanted to know what it was like to drive a spanking brand new Cadillac. After a lot of begging, he finally convinced Quincy to join him. The joyride turned into a high-speed police chase. With the cops close on their heels, they knew the jig was up. Charles was the driver, and when he wrecked the car, he knew he'd spend the rest of his life on house arrest. Hiding in the bushes, both boys were scared and shaking. Charles was crying, knowing the punishment that awaited him. Quincy decided to take the fall for his friend. They both knew Quincy's mother was more lenient. They both knew Charles's parents would never tolerate such misconduct. The only thing Quincy told Charles as they approached the cops with raised hands was, you owe me. When the dust settled, Quincy went to juvenile hall and Charles went home. Quincy and Charles remained buddies until high school graduation. Charles's parents proudly sent him to a state university. Quincy looked for work to help his mother with the household expenses. They, their lives went in different directions. Charles went on to law school while Quincy worked at menial jobs, barely making ends meet. Over the years, the two men lost contact with one another. Charles, with his law degree, moved to the upper class neighborhood of Pacific Palisades. He eventually became a high profile district attorney with his eyes set on the attorney general's office. Quincy, now known as Q on the streets, uh, got involved in illegal drug, tra illegal drug, drug tra trafficking because it was a good way to put money on the table for his family. Q eventually moved in with his girlfriend, but continued to support his mother and siblings. One night, Q was set up to take the fall for the murder of an undercover FBI agent. The police raided his place and took him into custody. Q was looking uh, at some lengthy federal time. The raid was in all the papers. This murder made sensational headlines. Q was scared, broke, anxious and depressed. Charles also was in the headlines. He was running for election to the Attorney General's office for the state of California. He was busy on the campaign trail to win this coveted position. One day, a correctional officer came to Q's cell and notified him he had a visitor. He couldn't imagine who it could be since his mother and girlfriend visit only on the weekends. He walked into the visiting room, shackled, underweight, and depressed. Behind the table sat his old friend, Charles. The two embraced, shed some tears, and together decided to fight the judicial system for his freedom. The first thing Charles said after their embrace was, I owe you. And that's my story. Okay.